animals and human language. One evening, in the mid 1980s, my wife and I were returning from an evening cruise around Boston Harbor and decided to take a waterfront stroll. We were passing in front of Boston's aquarium when a gravely voice yelled out, Hey, hey, get out of there. Thinking we had mistakenly wondered, somewhere we were not allowed. We stopped and looked around for a security guard or some other officials, but saw no one. No warning signs. Again, the boys boomed. Hey, hey you. As we tracked the voice, we found ourselves approaching a large glass fence pool in front of the aquarium, where four harbor seals were launching on display. Incredulous, I traced the souls of the command to a large seal reclining vertically in the water, with his head extended back and up, his mouth slightly open. Rotating slowly, a seal was talking not to me but to the air, and incidentally, to anyone within your shot who cared to listen. The Khan 1997. There are a lot of stories about creatures that can talk. We actually, you usually assume that they are fantasy or fictions, or they that they involve birds or animals simply in imitating something they have heard humans say. As the rinse Deacon discovered was the case with the loud seal in Boston. Aquarium Yet we believe that creatures can communicate suddenly with other members of their own species. Is it possible that the creatures could learn to communicate with humans using language or does human language have properties that make it so unique that it is quite unlike any other communication system and hence unlearnable by any other creatures? To answer this question, we first look at some special properties of human language, then review a number of experiments in communicating communication involving humans and animals. We should first distinguish between specifically communicative signals and those that may be unintentionally informative signals. Someone who listens to you may become informed about you through a number of signals that you have not intentionally sent. See may not that you have a cold you snitched. That you are not at ease, you shifted around in your seat that you are disorganized, non-matching socks, and that you are from somewhere else, you have a strange accent. However, when you use language to tell this person, I'm one of the applicants for the vacant positions of senior brain surgeon at the hospital, you are normally considered to be intentionally communicating something. Humans are capable of producing sounds and syllables. In a stream of species, in a stream of speech that appears to have no communicative purpose, as in Castellalia, speaking in tongues, which is associated with the religious practice of Pentecostal Christian churches. These outpourings sound like language but with no speaker control. It is not intentional communication. We might say the same thing about some of the chirruping signs, singing, produced by birds. We also don't assume that the blackbird is communicating anything by having black feathers and sitting on a branch. However, the bird is continued to be sending a communicative signals with the loud squacking produced when a cat appears on the scene. We, so when we talk about distinction between human language and animal communication, we are considered both in terms of their potential for intentional communication. Properties of Human Language
While we tend to think of communication as the primary functions of human language is not its own distinguishing feature, all creatures communicate in some way even if it is not through vocalization. However, we suspect that other creatures are not reflecting on the way they create their communicative messages or viewing how they walk or not. That is, one barking dog is probably not offering advice to another barking dog along the lines of, hey, you should lower your bark to make it sound more manic. They're not barking about barking. Humans are clearly able to reflect on language and its uses. Example, I wish he wouldn't use so many technical terms. This is reflexivity. The property of reflexivity or reflexiveness accounts for the fact that we can use language to think and talk about language itself, making it one of the distinguishing features of human language. Indeed, without this general ability, to, we wouldn't be able to reflect on or identify any of the other distinct properties of human languages. We will look in detail at another five of them, displacement, arbitrariness, productivity, cultural transmission and duality. Displacement. When your pet cat comes up to you calling meow, you are likely to understand this message as relating to that immediate silent place. If you ask your cat what it is has been up to, you will probably get the same meow response. Animal communication seems to be designed exclusively for the here and now. It isn't used to relate events that were removed in time and place. When your dog says grrrr, it means grrrr right now. Because dogs aren't capable of communicating grrrr last night over in the park. In contrast, human language users are normally capable of producing messages equivalent to grrrr last night over in the park. And then going on to the say in fact, I'll be going back tomorrow for some more. Humans can refer to past and future time. This property of human language is called displacement. In the laws, language uses to talk about things not present in the immediate environment. Displacement allows us to talk about things and places, angles, fairies, Santa Claus, Superman, even hill, whose existence we cannot even be sure of. We could look at B communication with a small exception because it seems to have some version of displacement when a honeybee finds a source of nectar and returns to the beehive it can perform a distance routine to communicate to the other bees the location of this nectar depending on the type of dance round dance for nearby and tail waking dance for further away the other bees can work out where this newly discovered feast can be found doesn't this ability of the bee to indicate a location some distance away mean that bee communication has at least some degrees of displacement as a feature? Yes, but it is displacement of a very limited type. It just doesn't have the range of possibilities found in human language. Certainly. The bee can direct other bees to a food source, however, it must be the most recent food source. It cannot be the delicious rose bush on the other hand of town that we visited last weekend, nor can it be, as far as we know, possible future nectar and be heaven. Arbitrariness it is generally the case that there is no natural connection between a linguistic form and its meaning. The connection is quite arbitrary. We can't just look at the Arabic word K and form its shape to determine that it has a natural and obvious meaning and many more than we can with its English translation from dog.
The linguistic form has no natural or iconic relationship with the hairy four leg walking objects out in the world. In respect of the relationship between words and objects described as arbitrariness, it is possible to make words fit the concept they indicate as in figure 2.1. But this type of game only emphasizes the arbitrariness of the connection that normally exists between the words and its meaning. A false wall tall wall. Word made to fit concepts. There are some words in language with sounds that seem to echo the sounds of the objects or activities and hence seem to have a less arbitrary connection. English examples are cuckoo, crash, rob, squash, or whirr. However, these anomatophoic words are relatively rare in human language. For the majority of animal signals, this, there does appear to be a clear connection between the conveyed message and the signal used to convey it. This impression may be closely connected to the fact that for any animal, the set of signals used in communication is finite. Its variety of animal communication consists of a limited set of vocals, gestural forms. Many of these forms are only used in specific situations or establish territory or at particular times to find a mate. Cultural Transmission while we inherit physical features such as brown eyes and dark hair from our parents, we do not inherit their language. We acquire a language in a culture with other speakers and not from parental genes. An infant born to Korean parents in Korea but adopted and brought up from the birth by English speakers in the United States will have physical characteristics inherited from his or her natural parents but will inevitably speak English. A kid and given comparable all his experiences will probably male regardless. This process where the language is passed on from one generation to the next is described as cultural transmission. It is clear that humans are born with some kind of predisposition to acquire language in a general sense. However, we are not born with the ability to produce utterance in a specific language such as English. We acquire our first language as children in a culture. The general pattern in animal communication is that creatures are born with a set of specific signals that are produced instinctively. There is some evidence from student studies of birds as they develop their songs that instinct has to combine with learning or exposure in order for the right song to be produced. If those birds spend their first seven weeks Without hearing other birds, they will instinctively produce songs or calls, but those songs will be abnormal in some way. Human infants growing up in isolation produce no instinctive language.